Hey, what's up guys? This is Doug with Outlaw Off-Road. You know, we get questions every day uh, on topics ranging from sway bars to long arms and everything in between. And obviously we, we've got answers to those questions. We answer them all the time, but we wanted to make a video series for you guys to get into those questions, answer those questions for you, give you the right information, help you cut through all the stuff that you may have seen, some of the bad information out there. So that's what we're gonna do right here, right now. So let's get after it. Welcome back to Let's Get After It. Today, we are on episode five. Uh, we have already gone through tons of topics. We talked about how to pick a lift kit. We talked about what to look for. We talked about some of the component shocks. We talked about springs. We talked about sway bars last week. Now, we're gonna move on to control arms. Uh, back in the first and second videos, we talked a little bit about control arms and that we like to see front lowers. When we're talking about solid axles, we're talking about Jeeps. That's most of what we do. That's what we're known for, so that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, we like to see those two front lower control arms. And the reason we like to see that, we like to see them longer. Um, yeah, they're better, they're beefier, they're bigger, whatever. But, uh, and those are all side effects of that, but longer is really what we want. Um, when you're lifting that vehicle, you're rotating those axles in, and you're lifting them kind of in, you know, in and up. So control arms are gonna help to push that back out under, restore some of that caster, so the alignment angle, um, which is basically the front to back rotation of that axle. Um, mostly that's gonna have an effect on the road you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 plus miles an hour. Uh, it's that effect of, am I driving a sailboat on this highway? And am I changing lanes involuntarily? Uh, it's not a good thing, we don't wanna do that. So caster being proper for the lift height, you know, five, five and a half degrees for some vehicles, five and a half, six, and, and that's, that's vehicle specific. But to get that number right, super important on how that thing's gonna ride. Not really off-road. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I need control arms for off-road. No, not really. Um, that's more for on-road. This is an alignment geometry thing, and it lends itself to being a kit, having a kit more considered as a complete lift system, uh, which is what we like, it's what we prefer, and personally, it's what I like and what I prefer. So um, the lower control arms on the front are gonna do that for us. Um, lower control arms on the rear, kind of doing the same thing, but it's not really the second most important set for us here at Outlaw Off-Road, and, and most lift companies. The second set that we replace is the rear uppers, uh, and the rear uppers are done for pinion angle. Um, quite simply, if you want to go underneath your Jeep and find out what pinion angle is, is go look at the rear differential. Um, go look at that, go look at that drive shaft. Is the angle of that drive shaft coming out of that differential pointed straight at the type transfer case? If it's high, if it's low, we don't want that. That's going to cause premature wear on the U-joint back there. Um, it's going to cre possibly create some driveline vibration and, and that's not good. So especially when we get into the, the higher lift heights, uh, JL Wrangler, uh, for example, you know, you get over that two and a half inch. So you get into the three and three and a halfs, you're lifting it enough where the factory arms are pulling that pinion, uh, high, it's not going to be the right angle. And you can probably see yourself getting some driveline vibration. So we use those adjustable upper arms in the back to adjust that pinion angle and get that thing pointed right at the transfer case. Um, so caster on the front, pinion angle on the rear. That would get you four arms. Not really a thing to jump to six arms. Most companies, the vast majority of them, are gonna go straight from four to eight. Uh, and the reason we do that is because at eight, we now have full adjustability. We, we have our caster right, we've got our pinion angle right, now we've actually got our wheelbase right too. So we can move those arms around to get all of those angles right. This comes into play uh, big time when you're trying to fit big tires. Uh, if your axles are not centered front to back in those wheel wells, you're far more likely to have rubbing issues. You're going to have some axle alignment issues as the suspension cycles, um, all bad things. So when we're able to dial in caster, dial in pinion, front rear, right there, um, and now we go back and we get that wheelbase. So we talked about the napkin effect in one of the previous videos. When you lift it, axles come like this. Now we can get them right back like that where we want to get them. So that's kind of the effect of having all eight arms. Um, honestly, most kits that we install, uh, most of them are going to be two arms. I mean, that's, that's going to work for most people. Um, it's going to get that caster right. It's going to give you that feel on the road. Those are going to be, those are going to be the two arms that you need. Um, everything beyond that is an upgrade. Um, and, and that's fine. If it's in your budget, if it's, if it's going along with your idea of your build, your vehicle, your situation, Great, and, and we do a ton of those too, but just make sure that you're getting the right arms for your kit, the right number of arms, and that you know you're addressing um, 
the right problems. Um, now, getting down into control arms, you know, there's adjustable arms and there's fixed arms. Um, you know, there's companies out there that make outstanding non-adjustable arms. You don't need an adjustable arm to be, you know, a, a cool wheeler. Um, you need an arm that's going to work for your situation. A lot of people like maintenance free. There's companies out there that have great arms with great joints that are maintenance free. Sure, you can rebuild them uh, if you need to, but you don't have to maintain them, you know, at every oil change or every other oil change or, you know, take them apart and rebuild them every five or 6,000 miles or every couple of wheeling trips. So there's certainly those arms out there that you do that with uh, that are adjustable. If you want to get really, really dialed in or you really think that you might change lift heights later or there's a reason that you would need something adjustable, if you actually think you're going to adjust your arms down the road, by all means, grab an adjustable arm. Tons of great ones out there. Tons of great companies make them. Um, if you're not looking to change lift heights down the road or you're not looking to get just super dialed in, you can save a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of maintenance uh, by going with a set of fixed arms. Generally, uppers are always going to be adjustable, so that's, you know, that's just a thing. But when we talk about adjustable versus non-adjustable, we're generally talking about lowers, the bigger ones, the longer ones, the beefier ones. Um, and you can, get, you can save yourself some money, some, some, some blood, sweat, and tears by getting non-adjustable if that works for your situation. Um, but you can certainly do that. So think about when you're looking for a lift kit, you know, talk with the professional. Obviously, you can call us. We can talk about it with you. But really think about your situation, your vehicle, your build, and what's going to be best for you, what's going to fit with your intended use of the vehicle, uh, what's going to fit with your lift height, and then what's going to fit with your budget. Uh, you know, all those are important questions to answer, um, and those are questions that should be asked. Um, and those answers will point you in the right direction. So um, definitely want to make sure that you're getting the right number and the right type of control arms. And that's going to help you a ton on the road um, and really make sure that your kit's getting dialed in for you and what you want to get out of your vehicle.